the all about effects video which you should have watched several times so you understand completely about effects and even if you don't you can go to this section of the construction kit this article where you can go through these breadcrumbs right here and get to understanding effect registration you know that form that pops up when we want to configure an effect it has a bunch of fields in there which bear some explanation and this is the article to go through when you want to understand what to put in those fields. So they are all explained here very nicely. Uh, for example, Registrar is the guy who actually registers the effect. You can set that manually if you want to, but most of the time you don't need to. That's explained there. And if you need a damage type when you're setting some damage effects. And this is really important. Duration. You need to know how long an effect is going to stick around for. And related to that is this GRP. If you want to set a guy as the owner and victim of an effect, but it's not you who controls where whether it's going to end, it's him, the guy that you're putting it on, you want to check that box. So that's a little tricky. You might want to experiment with that. For those kinds of effects to see how they work exactly and uh, all these are extra things which we will look at in the power management video but just wanted to show this to you uh, to lay some groundwork some background for Fra frankenstein's lab and that is the feature which we are going to be talking about in this video so let's go to vanny and actually click on that see what we get Add skill track, we'll talk about that in a minute. Convert to spell, don't run that. We'll see that in the dragon video later for spell tokens. Define sound effect as if you have an MP3 or a WAV file in Dropbox and you want to paste that into the framework. This is how you do that. And we'll, we can have fun with sound effects. Edit properties, there's a bunch of options here which where you, it's an easier way to edit your properties. Make sure your class is spelled properly very important for importing and there's all your surge information and your defenses and different kinds of stuff and we'll say cancel there and go on to the next one which i believe is contributing effects now what that does is if your dm puts takes you to task for having a damage bonus of 10 all the time for example he says i want to know what goes into making that number how are you getting 10 well you use this you run contributing effects you give gen dam mod which is the where the 10 is stored and it will go through all the effects on your token that is contributing to gen dam mod that is adding to make that number up to 10 and it'll give you a nice breakdown there delete be careful with that you don't want to delete the wrong property if you're going to use that or discard stale back up your token first that way you can revert back to it same thing with this delete monster checks if you want to clear all the monster knowledge that you've accumulated after after god knows how many adventures edit aura we're going to be seeing the aura being configured for the dragon later for the gold dragon and you can come back here after you do that and change to a different color if you want to and edit miscellaneous properties let's see what that's all about um yeah so things like leader healing if you have leader or rather potions you can put that in there if you have two potions put two in there and uh there's the gen dam mod we were talking about remember that <laughs> so uh, different types of things ammunition if you have five arrows then put five in there don't leave it a thousand you don't have unlimited arrows it only tracks one type of ammunition ammunition for your main weapon main ranged weapon and disease of course if you have a disease you'll know which one if you run this macro although i imagine your dm will tell you you have mummy rot or something like that so edit properties and uh, yeah you can do your skills and abilities and transients which is the stuff like xp and hit points and all that that are changing frequently import transients as if you have a new player token which you want to use but you're halfway through the game day and all your transients are are you know different things you have your surge remaining down to four out of six or something like that and you don't want to transfer what you have on the player token that you're using to this brand new player token that you have here so rename the one that's already here to vanny backup or something like that paste in your new vanny player token and then run this import transients and it will get that four 
surge remaining and put it on your new token and then you can delete that old one that's how that works so that striker feature is if you have a hybrid for example and the importer doesn't know what your striker feature is if you have one you can actually set to any strike state but i've defaulted here to the rogues combat advantage all just to, for illustration purposes i say okay here and anytime you hit a token that is showing that state that combat advantage all state you can do let's say 1d8 damage say okay and lo and behold he is a striker now so that's how you configure a striker uh usually again usually the importer will do that for you if it doesn't you can do this manually that way and you can show skill tracks if you want to and uh, skill tracks and hidden you can edit those and if you want to know which of your properties are currently numerical and which are string then that's what that's for now let's to highlight what we can do with franks and science lab we'll, we will go to this locked chest here and see if we can configure that somehow to make it more interesting yeah you can go through manually and say to your player well to give me a thievery check and then just tell them <clears throat> excuse me uh, uh what you get and he can manually say, okay, well, you find a trap or whatever. But what if we can actually store some information on here to say, yes, you did find the trap or you did disarm the trap rather, or no, you missed it and here it is. Uh, well, let's say we want to have a poison needle on that chest that will come out and attack if he fails the thievery check. Well, how do we do that? Well, the first thing we need to do is actually put a poison needle attack on there, a macro. So the way we do that is we go to Frankenstein's lab and we go import monster power since this is technically not a PC and we will accept the value of zero because we don't have any monster text, monster power text rather, but I do have my handy dandy text editor here where I have got some phrases for filling out this form pre-typed out so you don't have to watch me typing them out so uh, we will do a poison needle and we will do some flavor text for that put that in there and weapon as a keyword should be fine and the range is one because he'll be standing beside it presumably and uh, you trigger the trap we can put that in the effect text because that's not really harmful If the poison needle is activated, then of course the, you know, the, the trap has been triggered. So let's go to the options menu here and no, it's a no action attack and that will is okay. Targeting it is melee AC defense and one creature. That looks good. If it's more than one creature. You can select that too. That's fine. Uh, if it's a really big poison needle trap, a whole bunch of needles come spraying out in a close burst or whatever. And here's the main attack. So let's say it has a nine modifier with one d8 of poison damage which we will put in here and i also have some hit text and let's put that in there small venom soaked needle paste and attacks one that should be good so we'll say okay there and that will generate a macro on this token for doing the attack there it goes now very very important we have to own the token so the send macro when it's sending the poison needle macro out it gets to you because if a token's not owned then send macro is not going to work so make sure that you have the right username when you're logged in and if you don't just hit own again when you're live with your players they won't know what's going on don't worry about it <laughs> so uh they'll just see this locked chest and you know on this token which is harmless that's fine now we need to use this poison needle somehow we need to configure so the thievery tracks that we are going to put on here the dc results that's what a track is it's a dc result knows to run that the way we do that is we go add skill track and we only want to do the last thievery 
track. We only want to show that. Say OK. Thievery DC1, we will designate this as the failure track. And I have some, uh, we'll just reuse the hit text there because the, this is the triggering DC. If they get below the success DC, which we're going to do next, then we want to do this. We want to display this DC result and we want to run a macro. On the library token, it's asking where the macro you want is located. It's on the lock chest token. So the default is correct there. We'll accept that. It goes and it looks at all the macros on that token. And we need to select one. Of course, we're going to select poison needle. OK, now we're going to do the success track. We'll say DC 12 is good enough for a success. And we will give the happy news that you have successfully disarmed a trap but we have a problem remember we define that macro for poison needle we're going to go past the dc1 as the, the loop of the skill check macro iterates through all the different you know one two three four five it's going to say well i found a macro for dc1 so i'm going to let you run it which is no good because well, they succeeded. So we don't want to run that macro. We want to give a success macro now. So run macro, we'll check that, say OK. And if we had a success macro on here, you can put one on here if you want to. Put another one, call it success or disarm or whatever. And inside that macro say, way to go, Vinny or whoever. You disarmed the trap. But we don't. We could have put one, but we didn't. So let's use one from the MPB itself. I like to give information to my players using the message players macro, which is in the root group of the MPB. We discussed that in running encounters. So let's go down to that. Say OK. And there it goes. It has added that. And we will show skill tracks to show that we have actually indeed encoded those skill tracks onto this token. So we're ready to go. Again, make sure you've owned, hit own, otherwise you're not gonna be sent the message player's macro or the poison needle. So Vanny is casually walking by and he says, oh, the chest, I think I'll check this for traps. Figures he's no fool. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. You want to first check, so we want to run the skill check macro. So let's go down to Vanny's group, see that there, and go common free no. And go skill check. Nope, we don't want to perceive it. We want to do thievery. Say OK. And that looks pretty good. We'll say OK. And we want to do it against the thievery tracks that are on the token. If you were doing an arcana check, in place of a thievery because you had a power that allowed you to do that then you could do that you can do arcana check and actually select that and then go for thievery which is what we're doing now say okay and look at that it we got some information back you have successfully disarmed the trap hooray not only that look at this blue link here click here to run message players so we can do that run message players yes and it uh, automatically gives the message like that because it's not it's meant to be run from the mpb and not by send macro but that's okay like i said this is just for illustration purposes you can actually do your own success macro the same way import monster power and then put in the effect text field hey good job and we have, there it says you have successfully disarmed the trap. But So that's one scenario. That's the success scenario. But what if he fails? Will we be asked to do the poison needle? Well, let's find out. Skill check. Okay. And actually, you can't select Arcana there, but I can fix it so it does. But that was just for an example. And let's intentionally fail here. Say we only get an eight. 
let's look at what happens. Say okay against thievery and uh-oh click here to run poison needle and we got the failure text small venom soak spike slices into your palm so what's going to happen in actual gameplay when you are in a server situation is yes it will give that link in the chat but it will also pop up on the screen and let's see let's model that behavior to see how it pops up. Run poison needle, yep. Poison needle runs automatically. Let's see if that 17 is good enough. I think it is, okay. Yes, but he gets lucky, he only gets one point of damage. And we get the output in the chat. And yep, he's down one hit point. So tough luck for him. So that is how skill tracks work in tandem with defining macros to run alongside those skill tracks. And that is a demonstration of what we can do with Frankenstein's lab. Thanks for watching.